What's up, everybody? My name is Smooth Operative, and welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hotfix, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. Tonight, we are checking out games that were big in the year 2017, starting with Nier Automata and later The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But before we do that, I just want to quickly remind everyone that Summer Games Done Quick 2022 game submissions are open now until March 30th, which means you only have one more day to submit your games to the marathon. So if you were thinking about it, the time to act is now. And as always, you can find out more information at gamesdonequick.com. Um, so let's get into the games then, shall we? Joining me right now, I have Aloe Yark, as well as Jay New and Muffin Gannon. Aloe, you want to uh, introduce everyone for us? All right. So uh, I'm Aloe Yark, as you uh, heard uh as you heard <laughs> them say. <laughs> uh, so I speedrun Automata and Dodd 3, mostly stuff in uh, the Drakenir series. Uh, small brag, I have world record in this game and Dodd 3. Woo. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been speedrunning... Well, actually, I've been speedrunning uh, quite a bit longer than two years, but I've been speedrunning the Drakenir games for like two years. Nice. Um, so yeah, uh, if Jay wants to introduce uh, himself, he can do that. Nice, Muffin. Uh, hi, I'm Muffin Gan or Gadon. Uh, <laughs> I speedrun uh, a, a couple action RPGs like Kingdom Hearts and also Nier Automata. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Well, super stoked that all of you are here with us today. So Alo, whenever you are um, ready, you can give us the countdown or if you want to explain anything uh, about the game beforehand, we, it's up to you. <laughs> nah, let's get right into it. Let's, let's get right do into it, it then. All right, cool. All right, so I will uh, count from three and start on go. So three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we have a lot to get into. Uh, so, uh, Jay, do you want to do you want to explain some of the stuff that we <laughs> is gonna happen? Spiral of life and death. Is this a curse or some kind of punishment? Oh. I often think about the uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll just um do the introduction real quick. To kill him. So um, yeah, this is Nero um, A ending VC three mod. And so VC3 mod is a mod uh, that the community made basically to remove some of the major RNG elements in the um, run. So there's uh, two major RNG checks in the run. Uh, one of them is uh, leveling your sword to, v uh, to level 3, and the sword is VC3, hence the name VC3 mod. And the other thing are taunt chips, which are we are going to mention later as well. Also, the difficulty we're playing on is normal, which is just the most ran difficulty in the game. It just, yeah, I guess the normal difficulty, normal is even normal. though it's not the fast. <laughs> yeah, even though it's not actually the fastest difficulty, we just prefer to run it because it's a little bit more challenging than easy. So yeah, um, this section right here, um, it's not actually the core gameplay, it's mo mostly a an action RPG, but uh, Yoko Taro likes to, so that's the, the developer of the game, or like the, the mastermind behind the near games, Yoko Taro likes to uh, um, put different genres and influences in his games, and one uh, Nier Automata is no difference there. Yeah, so uh, what you saw me do right there? Uh, is push the ally to the side, and that's to manip the ally so that it kills the enemies faster, because the waves are predetermined. Ooh, missed that guy. That's okay. Uh, and I'm going to be doing the same thing right here as well. Alright, so we pushed um, that guy to the side. Hello! Are you, uh... Hello. Am I being heard <laughs> on stream? So we are hearing uh, Jay on the Discord call. We just weren't totally <laughs> sure if everyone oh else could, could hear. <laughs> so um, we're, we're working on it right now, and we'll see what Richard has to say very soon. Permission granted. 
So you want to maybe mention why you are getting hit by those lasers, Ala? Oh yeah, okay. So we actually intentionally get hit by the lasers. It's not just because I'm bad at the video game. Um, so we intentionally get hit by them because it helps speed up some menuing later because we're going to be using some buffs. And the recovery menu uh, is tied to the buff menu, so like recoveries are in there as well. And we shouldn't have to heal too much, so we'll be fine or whatever. Let's go, we can hear Jay. All right, nice. I guess people can hear me Welcome now. back, <laughs> even though you never left. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, as we get through shmup, um, I kind of wasn't paying attention to what you guys were saying. It's okay. Checking my audio. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow, you're getting called out in chat. Allo? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Um, let me reintroduce myself or introduce myself for the first time for Chad. I'm Jano uh, underscore uh, because somebody took Jano, apparently. <laughs> um, I've been running near Automata. <laughs> um, I've, I've been speedrunning. I started with Automata. I've been speedrunning for like about a year now. And. Yeah, that was basically it. I like to plunge glitch. Jay does he's like the plunge glitch. Which is something. <laughs> yeah, he's he's plunge glitch man. And we're gonna mention what that is later. Uh, so we we're can. right at the end of Shmup. There's this enemy here, the 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 spinny boy. When he does the spinny, it's bad. And now we're introduced to what a wall is. Yes, I'm aware. Jay, you wanna <laughs> you wanna um mention combat? Like, what are we doing? So, combat? all right, a lot of things are going to come at us really fast here. Um, so, Aloe's uh, taunting the enemies and he's doing an attack called the damage glitch. Uh, the damage glitch looks the same as the regular standing heavy oh. attack, um, but for some reason, if you do the heavy attack during a dash, uh, you deal five times the damage. We don't know why, but it just works that way and we like it because that's a lot of damage. And. Yeah, we're done with Silo 1. Uh, for Marks 1 over here, um, we're going to be, again, utilizing the damage glitch. Plus, we're going to be using the melee attack buff. So, wasting all those recoveries and shmup came in handy for making the menus more um, enjoyable to go through, let's say. And we're just going to be melting through angles with the damage glitch as 5 times multiplier and the 2 times from... Uh, the buff, they, the bosses just don't stand a chance. Also, you saw Aliak do a paw pad there to skip some dialogue. We're going to be doing that later in the run as well, uh, and we get to explain that later. So, oh, by the way, we're out of bounds. Yeah, we're, we just got out of bounds. That's going to happen a lot. That's called <laughs> Crane Skip Skip. Um, it's called that because we skip doing Crane Skip, which is <laughs> the other thing where you go over the crane. And in Silo 2, uh, I was going to start doing another thing called Pod Slow Mo. So he's charging, a, charging his Pod program, which slows down everything around you, uh, all the enemies, all the environment. And that, what that's going to allow us to do is we're basically going to kill all the enemies before they get a chance to attack us. And they have this really annoying attack called Whirly Arms, where they spin their arms around them. And the attack frames on that are insane. Oh, yeah. Um, and. <laughs> You just, if you get caught in that, good luck. And now we have one of the major roadblocks for new runners, which is called Bridge Skip. It's this incredibly tight high jump that Allo just made look like it was a breeze of the park. Um, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> insane. Did. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's very much a very tight jump. And now we do this other cool out of bounds here. And we're almost on our way to Silo 3 again where we uh, do a laser to get rid of these shield enemies. Nice. That's called God Laser if you hit all the enemies um, in one hit. That was cool. And, <laughs> that yeah. was really cool. So yeah, all the enemies, uh, we fast. have a set pattern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a set pattern of killing all of these enemies. All movements Alaric does is predetermined. He wants to do... Um, of routed movement, basically, routed combat. And yeah, he's just gonna 
go through and kill everything as they spawn. So we have a relatively new thing uh, here called New Swag, which isn't really swag, but we just call that because we had a skip called Angle Swag, uh, which was actually swag because it didn't save time. It saved like less than half a second if done perfectly. Uh, we went over angles. Yeah, we went over angles and it looked really cool and stuff. I guess even but, they get bad intel yeah, we just have time, huh? the new swag now, which Alaric found, actually. It's true, I did hmm. find that. Pretty I cool. Bet on that. What, uh, what causes God Laser? Okay, so the reason why God Laser works is because um, all of the stubbies jump up and you shoot above the shield. Uh, and that actually lets you uh, kill all of them all at once, which is the reason why that works. Does uh, someone want to explain marks? So yeah, this is boss here, marks two. We do a strategy here called a buffless, is what Alu did. Um, it's basically uh, placing our uh, damage glitches to where we know uh, marks moves, so that uh, we deal damage while he does his attack, so we don't have to uh, use a buff and uh, we save a bit of time that way. And now we have angles and a big buddy uh, over here big boy over here um, and this fight that we're doing right now uh, it's all on a timer there's nothing we can do to speed it up but um, in the next phase there is going to be a major RNG check uh, which is uh, punches which is the attack angles is doing right now um, oh no again so yeah, uh, Ganon's yeah. cutting out. Angles is doing punches right yeah. now, and we want Angles to bring punches into the next phase uh, because Angles can't do the same attack uh, twice in a row, and that transfers through a phase, uh, and that's very important because in the next phase, if he does punches, we lose like 20 seconds. And we obviously don't want to lose time because this is a speed run. Uh, so yeah, it's very <laughs> brutal in prologue when you get to this point, and all your dreams are crushed by angles giving you punches, which we didn't get. We didn't. We didn't get the fun attack either, though, which is sad. Yeah, we didn't get mini game. Yeah, we didn't get mini well. game. So yeah, we so threshold the So you can see the health bar uh, oh, actually, disappear yeah. on angles. <laughs> Oh, I was just uh, anyway. agreeing with you with the health bar, is all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see the health bar disappear. It's gone, wow. And <laughs> what that means is uh, that we've tre thresholded angles and we don't have to deal more damage. We just have to wait out his attack animations. Um, if we hadn't dealt thresholded angles yet, if we gave like all ranged attacks so we couldn't melee attack him, um, we still wouldn't want to hit him here because. Um, when you melee attack certain enemies, there's hit lag in this game, and you can lose so much time from hit lag. It puts both you, angles, and everything around you in hit lag. You just sit there, waiting the game to render the next frame <laughs> as you attack. Yeah, this section is also on a timer, basically, but the timer is angles, angles as animations. And now we're in everyone's favorite split, Ninjas. Yeah, this split is infamous for being really annoying. Um, so what we're going to do but is first the of all, we have, here. Yeah. And, and now we have a really free trick time. here. Like, it's like literally free. free. Like, bro. Like, literally free. <laughs> like, literally free. <laughs> Easiest trick in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, finicky to get that heavy hold inside the hey, inside that was angles. Rude. <laughs> That's really loose. Yeah, yeah you can you can see ninjas being ninjas jumping out of the way, not lining up. Yeah, um, that's why we that's why we call them ninjas. <laughs> yeah, so the double lift we did there, um, we're not gonna do them much, but they're really interesting. So when you're doing a lip lift uh, and going up a slope while doing a lift, um, the, during the lift animation, the game pushes you forward a little bit. And since you're against the slope, you touch, you technically touch the ground. The game counts you as having touched the ground. So it lets you do another lift 
while midair. So that's called a double lift and gets us up. Uh, we get two lifts. Lift, basically. Yeah. Do you want to explain the thingy here? The thingy here? The split? I hate the split. The split is terrible. Allo. <laughs> his favorite split. <laughs> Um, okay. Actually, while you focus, um, yeah. I can explain it. Um, so we want 9S's dialogue uh, to end right as Angles is finishing his attack. Because after 9S's dialogue ends, uh, Angles does this attack. And we want them to line up to not waste time just waiting for a random Angles attack to finish. And, and that actually lined up really well. Yeah, overall it was pretty didn't good. Have to shortcut <laughs> yeah. Control system. Yeah, sometimes you can just get like completely screwed over by the attack pattern that he does, which I seem to get screwed over a lot by. Um, <laughs> but so now yeah. finishing off angles, we just use the buff here. Um, oh, let's so go! I got double can... hit. What? You got the double oh. hit? Oh. No way. That's hype. <laughs> Let's go. That's frame perfect, by the way. That is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're out of prologue, and Aloe's punching the air. Um, so in prologue, we were chaining dashes, and that was our fastest way of movement. Uh, we're going to have, what, like four different tiers of movement throughout any percent? Yeah, four ish. Uh, <laughs> the first one we did in prologue was dash chaining, and now we're dash punching uh, since we lost our big sword virtuous treaty and equipped bare fists. Equipped our fists, let's say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah this menu boss here. The menus in All this right. game are, in my opinion, quite sticky. They're yeah, they're awful in my opinion. They're okay. <laughs> and they're okay. <laughs> okay <laughs> they're not the greatest, they're, but they're not. I don't think they're, they're really the not. worst. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we just no. uh, turned something on called self destruct, which is going to be uh, yeah. such an incredible and versatile tool for the speedrun. And one of the uses we're, huh? of it, we're going to use right uh, just in a second after this dialogue here. Um, oh, so. SD can or self destruct can cancel okay. a movement like we do right here, and we also do a partner dialogue cancel. So we talk to Ninus, and um, w while we have the the dialogue option up of like changing his AI behavior, uh, we can uh, walk into the dialogue trigger, and if two dialogues in this game meet each other, they cancel each other out, and that's going to be really important for the later portions of the run. And um, so we cancel the two dialogues with each other, and that just makes it go faster, because that uh, dialogue right there was tied to a slow walk. And now we're so in the, the thing section. is, um, we don't like to talk people. We're really antisocial. And we're going to do everything in our power to try and avoid talking to people, even if that entails talking with people to avoid talking to other people. <laughs> oh, I missed the guy. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so we have our second shmup here, I guess. Um, or third. The shmup can be a little scary because Yeah, you don't have any recoveries in this section, so if you also if you get hit enough, um, there's this like critical health thingy that happens where the game freezes a little bit, and that is slow. We don't want that, so it's best to not get hit here. Oh, we got also, a skinny we're be... boy. This oh, is a little no. slower. It's okay. He's he's just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you saw Allo um, line his pod program up perfectly with the spawn of the first uh, medium flyer, so it insta kills him as he drops. Yeah, like all of the bullets are <laughs> just yeah. go burr and hit him or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we have another fun cutscene skip here. Uh, we're going to be using. Uh... Actually, everybody uses a different thing. I don't know what we're using. We're using uh, the tail we of the flight that. unit. 
Or, I don't use that. that that's what I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that saves like two seconds. Or one. Uh, we, you can see that we did an attack into what would be a slow walk normally. Uh, if you do that, it skips the whole slow walking to, to be intel, looking around, the in this observing the environment, We've been seeing more and we more get straight like into the cutscene. And that and saves about five space. seconds. And considering we're going to be discovering a lot of places, and uh, the, the time is just going to add up a lot. Uh, you can see him do yeah, that again. Yeah, resistance camp here. There's another dialogue cancel here. Yeah, uh, by talking to these people, we. Avoid talking to other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we and basically now we skip nine have some. Yeah. Yeah, we have some mandatory fetch quests here that we have to do, unfortunately. Um, but they're routed pretty well. So, one thing you're gonna see Alu do while he's uh, traversing the overworld here is. Uh, vegetation's claim most of it now. Oh no! You're cutting out. Nah. Oh, so. uh, take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I lied to you. It's, it's okay. Yeah, basically what Ganon was saying is uh, I'll be moving like my camera around and stuff like that uh, to avoid enemies uh, being locked on to automatically because uh, we move around a lot with attacks. So yeah, I'm like doing dash punch, dash punch. Uh, that actually goes towards enemies because it's supposed to be like helpful for like a casual player if you're trying to hit an enemy. But uh, we don't want that. It's really annoying because we go the wrong direction. So we have a cool little AI minute coming up here. Um, we only need to kill three of these guys, and one of them is the big boy, so that's easily distinguishable. And the other two are... Uh, we find out who we need to kill by shooting in the vicinity. Okay. And what that does is it aggros the enemies we have to kill, the quest enemies. Uh, so we just basically shoot in the air and kill in the whoever's huh. aggroed to us. The resistance is a valuable ally to Yorha. By helping them, so yeah, we, we gotta go back and to that just saves the time. Camp. I don't think they're a pain. Do the fetch yeah, quest stuff. Oh, look at this. But the cool thing about the nice fetch quest is that <laughs> they allow us to upgrade our sword. That is a very cool thing. To look, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So our sword is now level two, and um, that just means we get a bit of um, attack speed. which also transfers to uh, movement speed, funny enough, because we move our attacks to move around. Messed up a little bit there, but it looked yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're dash swinging now. Um, dash swinging and dash punching are almost exactly the same speed, but uh, for them to be the same speed, dash punching, you need you have like three frames you can press punch. Uh, in order for it to compete with dash swinging. But you can see Allo do like two dash swings, one dash punch, two dash swings again. Uh, that is to line up uh, your stride length. Uh, and you, you want to be basically ending up where you want to. Not too late, not too early. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm pushing <laughs> buttons a little early. I'll, I'll get used to it. My hand, I'm blaming it because my hands are cold. And I'm talking. That, that's my excuse, you know? <laughs> nah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're coming camp. over to desert. Uh, um, we have to do some buys here, basically just get a couple of buffs and uh, recoveries and a resilience chip and... Oh, oh, do I no. see Alu going for that strategy? Oh, no. Oh. I'm going for it. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, no. We, get, this... we will get a lot of time to talk about it. But basically, there's this really precise trick that uh, is not... You, you don't go for it if you're running 80%. You don't go for it ever. Uh, it's really precise, and it it can punish you if you fail it. A lot. So, I don't know how this is going to go. It'll um, be fine. So, here... 
Who opens a uh, here we just um, so There's Jackass wanted to show way, her right? show us how cool her explosives are to us and yeah. since we don't like talking to people we just you know clipped out of bounds and just went to the desert on ourselves uh, we got a trigger there uh, um, that's sure why you saw Allo do all the cool crazy movement uh, out of bounds uh, Unlike walls in this game, triggers are coded pretty well. You can, there are very few spots where you can avoid triggers and go to the next one. And we're gonna be doing a lot of movement to triggers uh, and just collect triggers out of bounds, in bounds. Careful. Yeah. We've got yeah, they're so very, very hard coded. <laughs> like it's 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 annoying sometimes, but we won't we won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we just got Potsy. That's gonna come in handy uh, in a little bit, and we're gonna be shooting these flyers over here because uh, we found that uh, they drop taunt chips, and uh, we explained how cool taunt is. And taunt chips, what they do is they multiply the effect. And we like more damage, so we want to get Very important. Chips. Very, it's very important. Also, yeah. Individual stupid rock TM. Marked. Stupid rock TM. 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 Lamp. What's that? Analysis. <laughs> Lamp. Yeah, we're going to be getting a huge sandslide here if Allo doesn't mess this up. Oh, let's go. We got the decently oh, fast. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Um, instead of following our buddy Don here, uh, did you guys introduce Don? We did not, no, right? Report. Yeah, so the buddy there is Don. Uh, instead of Please following our buddy Don here, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just going to be clipping out of bounds and taking a better line to Adam Pit, where we're going to be meeting Don at his end location. That sounds so ominous. His end <laughs> location. <laughs> Where he's gonna meet his demise. Spoilers. No! Okay. Oh no! <laughs> this is okay. I know how to back these up. Let's go. Uh, but he was a little too low and then hit the platform, unfortunately. So, um, what is this? he yeah, had to Allo jump some... back up. Yeah, uh, unfortunate. To them too, uh, so before I explain the menu oh. here, um, uh. here's Don. Oh no, you... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we're supposed to like hit him before things happen, but uh, yeah. the, the, the we're guys supposed were to being kill him before we get. We were supposed to kill him before we get control and the camera goes all crazy and stuff. Uh, so while we kill a bunch of enemies here, um, what Allo did on the quick menuing he did, um, the first thing he did was equip the taunt chip we got from the flyers, which we're going to explain a little bit. And the other thing is he equipped uh, a small sword and uh, the heavy slot on weapon set 1, so the, basically the same thing as weapon set 2. And what this is going to allow us to do is... Uh, uh, you remember how OP damage liches were? Um, yeah, we can do two now. And we can just swap the weapon set once we throw out a sword. And while that sword spins in the air, we can throw out another one and we can then switch again, again, again. And this is called double damage glitching. And so yeah. you saw that I uh, uh, SD'd there for its intended purpose, uh, which is doing damage. And I did damage to yeah, a lot of enemies. Lot. And that was just a get XP. Yeah, we're just melting through this uh, this naked man here. Uh, he can't really talk a lot. Um, he's trying though. He's he's practicing. I'm sure with more practice, he can oh my God, uh, improve his talking. Yeah. He almost hit me and. Remember, Taunt plus two increases um, not only our damage, but his damage, so you can die there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't died there at all. Oh, weird flex, but okay. That, that, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Humble bragging. <laughs> yeah, I never died there. Ever. 
<laughs> so yeah, you, you saw Ala use spot slow-mo to slow down the environment so Looks the platforms like don't now. fall under him. And that's like, a little bit of time just, just jumping. I know. And what we're going to be doing before. is... We better report this to command. Uh, let's see which one Allo goes for it, actually. Well, I'm going so for boxless. Oh, you're going yeah. for boss boxless? That's spicy. So this yes. is a newer trick. No. Um, it's really... I was too spicy. Gang. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. Too spicy. I don't care. It's I'm going for spice. it again. <laughs> 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 you got this. Go. Let's go. Let's go. So yeah, this skips uh, Pog Box, Can't stop and the Pog Box is the the box up there. It just has a weird, like Pog Champ like looking texture, so we just call it Pog Box. And with the out of bounds movement there, we basically got in range of the transporter and saved and loaded again, and that's gonna teleport us here. Uh, that actually saves time because we're running RTA no loads, so. Yeah, that does save time. Maybe we should... So while we go to amusement park here, um, let's explain how you got the taunt chips. We never explained that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so when Allo killed the flyers, um, he didn't go pick the chips up, and somehow they magically appeared in his inventory. Um, so a weird thing of this game is if you kill an enemy and the enemy drops something, uh, either a so chip or a drop. Uh, if you go into a cutscene, uh, the cutscene automatically picks all the items up for you. And another cool thing is, for some reason, it dupes the items. So instead of getting one chip there, we got two. And we're actually going to use both of them, so that comes in really handy. And normally the drops would be RNG, but since we have VC3 mod, they're not. And we're just going to go over this barricade. Um, Dinas says that we can't, but... He's lying. Yeah, he he's, doesn't know a lot. He's not a believer. <laughs> he's lying. Yeah. I don't think Skybox looks clear. cool. Yeah, uh, how we it changes. We went to the end of... We went to the end of the sewer just to get a trigger so we can advance story. And we're going to be skipping the amusement park discovery cutscene here by jumping Where over it. There's a really low wall. Yeah, amusement park is packed with cool um, weird. tricks and skips. Uh, one of them is coming up here. We're gonna, uh, yeah, basically jump over this wall here to uh, skip a small cutscene called uh, where we're getting introduced to the tank and the, the machine saying let's play, tank let's likes play. To play, and we don't. Yeah, have so have we call yeah, this skip, let's play not. skip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's we're go. We're here to game. Nice plunge let's glitch. Go. That's two that frames, nice by the way. Glitch. <laughs> All right, so this um, is coaster right here. So we just got the let's play trigger, which is why I went off the rails. It's like why why would you go offline? Um, so we got a trigger there. Uh, we got another trigger from the area that I pod launched from. Uh, that one specifically so that we load this area over here. Uh, and then we got another one at the end, um, right in front of the uh, where the coaster comes out. So all three of those triggers make it so that we uh, actually don't even have to ride the coaster. And we do not, because we don't like fun. Fun is bad. Yeah. Instead, we're going to go do some chores here. Uh, we're going to pick up a small recovery that we're going to use later uh, after the Revoir fight. And we're going to make our way over to the Spear, which is going to unlock our fourth and final movement. And Spear's just going to allow us everything. It's going to be easier for us to clip. Uh, it's gonna come in handy in long jumps. Oh. It's gonna be really um, fun moving around with it. Right. It's just a really cool thing. Oh, and also another thing, um, we had Ninus on passive because he likes to shoot stuff, <laughs> and that can, uh, he likes to annoy our our enemies we like to kill. So um, from this section on, that doesn't really matter. So we switch him to Ninus to. Uh, save a little bit of time with him shooting enemies in the later half of the game. So now we're yeah. into the beaver fight. So Simon, Simon Beaver. Simon Beaver. Simon Beaver. Um, my favorite fight in the game, personally. Um, so right now we just uh, want to damage her um, pretty fast, but not as fast as we can, because if we're too fast, the speed police will give us a, a ticket for speeding. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, if you thresh her there too quickly, she can um, pick an attack randomly, and a few of them are actually too slow. Uh, but yeah, if, if we do it correctly, she'll always do the same attack. And hopefully this is the only hack we're, hack we're gonna see in this run, right there. If we take hacking hopefully. Damage, it'll affect our bodies as well. <laughs> One, two, yeah, three, can four, be, yeah. five, six, seven, let's go. <laughs> Yo, you got it. <laughs> Let's go. Are we seriously being attacked? Like, are we just overhyped? A cutscene skip? Hey, <laughs> it feels good, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, we just. No. Killing these as fast as possible. We don't like to get hacked, or we don't want to get hacked. Oh, this is very, very not fast. <laughs> yeah, so these, uh, these androids on the crucifixes have two different attacks. Both of them can. Um, force you into a hacking mini game and those are just a waste of your time so we want to avoid them and also the hitboxes on the androids attacks are a bit jank but Allo is an expert at uh, avoiding them by now and um, so we have a short menu here of using an animal bait for good luck <laughs> and uh, also equipping the uh, spear on both of our weapon sets like slots so we can have the spear and the small sword at the same time. And that so was yeah, a good we fight. Self -destruct. Yeah, that was a really good fight. Um, we got a row. Nice. Row. Wow. So yeah, there's an RNG chip drop there. You can get either weapon attack, weapon defense, range attack or range defense uh, drop there and oh, yeah. you want um, either of the attack chips. Uh, with slow-mo, we slowed down the animation of the door opening and we got behind it. And we used our handy-dandy spear to clip uh, around the hinge spot so we got out of bounds and we skipped Ninus talking about how machines have emotions or something. <laughs> and yeah. you see Aloe doing spear dashing now. Um, spear dashing is really fast and uh, thank god we're not playing on Japanese because Tubi screams a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um so this is going to be so the, the fastest grounded movement them, we're going to be doing in 90% of the categories actually space, right? but it's going to well, be the movement in the rest of the run but no one knows for um, the weather is yeah, just... to tell what an playing with english voices is just because it's faster oh yeah i feel like that's so rare <laughs> it very much is <laughs> yeah yeah the Japanese text is technically faster RTA-wise, but we, because we use lowest timing, it actually doesn't make a difference. Oh, it's okay. Major. Yeah. Since Alo is going for the the risky boar strat, he oh, got yeah, the safety wanna, transporter there and that? saved. Um, I will. Um, so before that, uh, we just got like an oil filter or something from Pascal, and we're just we have to go bring it back into Anemone. And after that, we, we have to go back to Pascal's ruins, again. That box. And uh, we're just gonna clip through that box because it's faster, and we're gonna be using the sachet and animal bait we bought uh, way back at Desert to ride an animal to amusement park. Or Please, <laughs> okay, let's go. I put it like half oh, in the wall. I was very scared oh, of that. Yeah. I was trying to be scared there. So you got the, um, the moose. Yeah. So you got the moose. Actually, that's uh, way better than the boar for this trick. Allo is gonna do. Um, so yeah, Sixo just called us, she's talking about how she got rejected, and as much as we, like, we as the player would like to hear about Sixo's love life, um, uh, like we said, we're antisocial, we don't like to talk. So instead of listening to Sixo and being a good friend, uh, we're just gonna, um, yeah, we're just gonna go talk to a door. No friends run. Hello, door. <laughs> Bye-bye, door. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this trick, um, what Aloe's gonna do is, okay, I'm gonna explain this really fast. What Aloe's gonna do is uh, this really precise trick where he's gonna land between the boar and using the low health that he has, uh, the boar's gonna clip him out the walls and he's gonna use the counter attack to clip the boar out and go, oh no! <sighs> yeah, so this. Uh, yeah, I died. <laughs> yeah. To be that honest, I wasn't expecting oh, you to no. get this first try. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, so that's sad. Yeah, that's why I got the safety transporter. Yeah. All right, I gotta so, talk about what that would have allowed us to do. Oh, what that would have allowed us to do is clip the moose out with you, and 
we would ride the moose under the map to Pascal's, uh, which would save a lot of time. Why is Pascal suddenly up there? What's that uh, trigger stuff, basically. So, uh, yeah, I've just been lying to you guys for the past minute. Uh, <laughs> sorry. There, there is word. no super precise trick with the animal. It's literally just the death warp. Uh, yeah, it's just a death warp. Command is deploying new flight units for us. They just set the coordinates. Yeah, so, so we get a call that uh, the Cedar Ruins are under attack. And uh, so if you like the big boy from Prologue uh, angles over here, now we have two. Big boy. Look at him. I'm taking a bad line for you all. Yeah, no. I hope you, well, I hope you enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really rare for Alo to consider even a bad line. <laughs> the flight units should be on the oh, roof of that all for um, your so yeah. entertainment. It'll be dangerous, but we're not going anywhere once we pass through that Goliath's yeah, legs. He's up there, we too. should be careful. This one's so... actually really annoying because uh, he can like squat down and make it so that you get put in a a, a lot of hit lag, like a lot of hit lag. <laughs> you can yeah, lose like yeah, seconds. Basically, <laughs> his hurt if we is squats ginormous. down, you. His hitbox extends a lot, uh, down a lot, so you can hit him with spear dashing. Um, yeah, now we have uh, Angle Soul, where we're gonna just we're not just gonna jump. Oh no! <laughs> they patched it. It was patched. Um, it's patched for today. It wasn't patched in the practice run, but I guess they just follow the stream and patch it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're just going to ignore this angles. <laughs> um, yeah, and we're just going to go to the second one. The game only requires you to kill... Uh, only the second one is required, basically. And we're just going to um, buff up and one-shot this guy. Yeah, all of our bullets hit angles, like, at once. Oh, look at that. Basically oh, no. perfect as I mess up. No, it's okay. How did I didn't that mess work? Up. I'm, I'm lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be coming up to one of the most interesting skips, and it was found by Aliarch. Hey, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Wow. Um, so yeah, this is going to be... Well, before that, uh, we're going to be getting what's called Sky Glitch. Uh, the commander is going to call us here right this now, and... We're going to do some movement, and we're going to hang off on her. And she's going to get really pissed. And from now on, uh, she's just going to not... Like, we, we won't get the ringtone when she's calling us. And when anybody's calling us. And, yeah, we have Sky Glitch now. And we're, instead of going to pick up on Adam and Eve, going to the amusement park. I remember saying that we don't like to have fun. Why are we going to the amusement park? So we're going to the amusement park to have as little fun as possible. Because, I mean, what is fun? You're, you're playing the game. You're playing the game. So we want to talk to this guy and collect some stamps. Now, stamp collecting sounds like kind of fun. Like, Allo, you're lying to me. And no, I'm not. I'm not lying to you. Um, so we actually talk to this guy and get some dialogue on screen. Oh, let's go. That clip is kind of hard, actually. That was really cool. <laughs> Um, and we go down here for a mandatory trigger. So, also, what Allo is doing yeah. right here is um, he's using his keyboard and mouse because with this dialogue up on the screen, uh, I mean, he's not using his keyboard and kinda, mouse, but kinda. you just can't. <laughs> you, you kinda. You can't jump or use any of the dialogue skipping buttons, but yeah, take it away. So, we actually watched this cutscene because. Movie night. Dead? Yeah, because we just feel like it. Look. Um, no, it's because it's uh, quite a bit faster to actually Destroyed watch the entirety of the cutscene than it is to skip the cutscene well, and do the fight with the way we're doing this. So I took the dialogue from the stamp guy. Um, he has a special property where if you kill him and talk to him at the same time, uh, you'll have dialogue on your screen, you'll be able to control yourself, so dialogue storage. And this fight takes around two-ish minutes, and we skip the entire thing. Uh, just by bringing some dialogue in. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite skips. 
That's this really cool. Again. Also, you may have seen that uh, Adam and Eve uh, finally got some pants. Um, and they started talking a little bit. Uh, we're going to touch on that later. But we just got a chest to uh, upgrade our Sword Virtues contract, BC. Which is currently level 2 to level 3. So we're going to be getting BC3. BC3 mod. Yeah, so the mod gives us some of the drops that we need for VC3. All of them just the RG ones. So you want to explain what you did there? So I uh, I grabbed the ladder. Now, the developers are like, hey, you're supposed to talk to the lady there. Now, we don't want to talk to the lady, but we also don't want to talk to 9S. And 9S is talking right now. So we forego that and talk to the lady over there um, by just going onto the ladder because they're like, you're supposed to talk to her and they don't want you to leave because they want you to figure out that you have fast travel. Um, and it's li like, you just go on the ladder and it's like, hey, she's talking now. Like, I, yeah, whatever dialogue is you into happening, a dialogue it doesn't with her. matter. <laughs> yeah, so we did another dialogue skip in front of the door. Um, it's like the same one we did right after we unlocked SD. Uh, yeah, we just talked to 9S, walked into a dialogue trigger. Boom, they cancel out or get to not talk to people. Of course. So we have another chat with Pascal here. Um, he tells us about this place, the forest that we're going to go to, but, uh, but before... Uh, we're going to actually do some buys. We sell some of her stuff. We sell some of her system chips to make space for uh, um, our damage chips. Buy 99 medium recoveries and a couple of buffs as well. And we also are going to pull up our sword to level 3 now. And now... Um, there's some family drama here um, happening on there. So this is an uh, optional quest uh, where... <laughs> nice plunge goes there. That was very scuffed, um, but it's... We made it over, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah. So um, we made yeah. over the family drama. Yeah, so there's a child running away from home, and the mom's like, no, don't run away, and the child's like, no, you're stupid. And so... Uh, but we don't want to deal with all of that. We're really antisocial. We don't really deal with anyone's drama, be it 6 0, be it some random family. So we kind of just go over their heads and make our way to forest as fast as we can. Yeah, we don't even like having regular conversations with people, uh, let alone getting involved within family drama. But yeah, that was another dialogue skip, which saves, what, like 20, 30 seconds? Uh, like I think that. it's like 15-ish. Whatever. <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot. But yeah, we're going to be... <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. That's the, that's just the talks about how he. <laughs> and 9S just talks about how he'd like to... Uh, Check this I don't guy. remember t-shirts. Uh, so Allo did equips right there. Um, he equipped the taunt chip uh, and he equipped what attack chip he had. And uh, the important thing is he equip uh, equipped resilience. Now resilience we bought way back in desert, uh, but Looks now like we get to equip it. Um, resilience, what it does is if you have above 80% HP, uh, you don't get staggered and you saw Allah buy 99 medium recovery, so basically we're always going to have 100% health. And not getting staggered is such a blessing in this run. Here they come. Bosses can be really annoying. And we basically want to keep damaging them at all times. So not getting staggered is really cool, especially with this next boss, A2. So we're making our yeah, way through also, forest, um, which forest has a lot of great geometry, and kind of keeping your speed actions through this uh, place is really castle? hard, and Allo's making it look incredibly easy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really not that hard. Try to, try to do it yourself and see uh, <laughs> how well you can do it. But yeah, we have Rainbow Road here. This skip is called Rainbow Road. Um, the name comes from the previous skip done here, 
Uh, that was called Mario Kart because you did. Oh my god, what was that? I don't know. Um, I had like no distance for some reason. It's okay. Uh, you did. Um, you did a drown warp, so people called it Mario Kart, and this is faster, so you decided to call it Rainbow Road, and you do a plunge glitch there, which is really cool, which is a two-frame trick, <laughs> and. We, instead of going through the well-designed puzzle of a castle, uh, we just choose not to, and we're just gonna go to the top floor like this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the intended way of going through the castle. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, that's what I did Looks casually. like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna be introduced to um, someone you may know. Um, this is A2. Also, yeah, before that, we go say hi to this baby. And That's yeah, we see Android. A2. Uh, type Android. Yeah, right. just give pats to the baby. Just tuck the baby in, <laughs> give him pats, give him a good night's kiss. Let's go, and we're just going to be having a fight here to. Uh, um, so we don't like how A2 uh, raises children, and we think our ways are better. So we're just fighting because of that, basically. And. As we're the protagonists, we're gonna win. So, yeah, that should give you the idea of who does what better. So yeah, we just over. That was three minutes time save, right yeah. there, right, right like there. That. that was a lot of time just save. Just like that. So the reason so yeah, why that saves so much time is because. Uh, 9S is like, we need to ask Commander about A2, and we're like, no, 9S, we, we don't, it's okay, you'll be fine, buddy. And uh, we, decide, <laughs> <laughs> we, we decide to just leave uh, to the right instead, because uh, that's where we want to go, we want to go to the transporter. And it's not like we actually have to talk to the Commander. It'll be faster. So we don't, <laughs> and it saves like two minutes. Let's stay sharp. No fighting. No fighting. But yeah, we... When you shoot the machines in Pascal's village, um, they say, like, oh, don't kill us. Don't fight. We like peace. And that's generally shorter than whatever dialogue we have at the moment, so... Uh, we canceled the dialogue of 2B saying, like, oh, we should go back to the resistance camp, blah, 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 with shooting the machines near Pascal. So we're making our way back to the resistance camp here because uh, we're picking up another quest from uh, an enemy. First, we cancel dialogue here by listening to some jams on the jukebox, and and now we're making our way over to Flo. Oh no! We're going to flooded right here uh, because there's another trigger that we need and. We, we love this place. It's absolutely amazing. Um, uh, so it's it's everyone's here. favorite um, destination of the entire room. It's a, it's a destination, I'll say that. <laughs> so we do a drone warp here to get to the shore fight as quickly as possible. And now this is just like, um, you'll see how much damage we deal with, like, the row, the yeah, double so damage glitching, the tauntless too. We learned so that uh, 2B is stinky. Uh, 2B is very stinky. Doesn't like to take baths. Yeah, because taking a bath um, is slow. And 2B is all, all about that, <laughs> all about that speed. <laughs> so uh, since we skipped uh, like the entirety of Flooded City, uh, we left over, we left um, some dialogue triggers back and we, are, we used that to skip Commander's dialogue. And that just put us into the cutscene, and the flight units came down, and boom, we are in shmup. This is going to so, yeah. be what you're going to you, be seeing for the next 14 minutes. <laughs> if you saw the beginning of this uh, run, um, and you were like, wow, this shmup section, it looks so cool. Like, with all the animations and with uh, the, the precise timing of the attacks or whatever. Uh, if that just looked incredibly cool to you, then oh boy, you're in for a treat. The next 14 minutes are exclusively for you, my dear viewer. <laughs> I'm in your life. Well, since we have so much time, <laughs> do you think, uh, Allo, you could maybe tell us a little bit about what got you started in near speedrunning and um, your speedrunning journey? Uh, yeah. 
So I actually got into this game because I heard some music from it. Uh, that was Ooh. my first interaction with it. So I was like, oh, the music is really cool. I want to I wanna play the game. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh my god, this game is so cool. <laughs> and I couldn't play it for like a year because I didn't have a good enough computer. Oh, jeez. Uh, and then when I built it, that was the first game that I played. The very first game, and it has become my favorite game of all time. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't overhype it and be disappointed. <laughs> it was everything you hoped for and more. Absolutely. So yeah, that's that's what got me into that. And I was already yeah. into speedrunning from like other games. I knew uh, Portal, actually. Portal 1. Oh, fun. Uh, some Zelda games. Uh, I was doing some Odyssey stuff as well. Uh, but I didn't have a capture card, so I couldn't play. And it's like, oh, this this new new sp near near speed game. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be really cool um, because just from playing casually, I was like, oh, there's a lot of cool stuff that I I, I would assume would be cool, uh, and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, I got into near. Uh, I played played through the endings just joined the Discord, didn't talk for the longest time, because I'm a shy boy. Aww. We meet in a marathon now. <laughs> really? Did um, the three of you meet uh, through the near speedrunning community? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Muffin actually was the first person I interacted with the community, interacted with in the community. Oh, yeah, I remember awesome. that. <laughs> Back when uh, the Replica remake came out. Yeah. And you've been friends ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and oh, I'm sure please. the tomato memes were strong <laughs> somewhere <laughs> in between oh, all of that. <laughs> we, have a, we have a thing called the Draconeer brain cell. It's just a summary of... If it's that big, we should oh, okay, so things are it. happening. Go ahead, Ganon. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, Best Girl just appeared. This is uh, Karl Theodor Ferdinand Grün, um, German Marxist philosopher. So um, some of, uh, I think someone in chat mentioned it, that um, all of the bosses in this game are actually named after mostly German philosophers. So we have um, Marx and Engels, we have Hegel in one of the later endings, and we have uh, Grün here who is a uh, less known philosopher um, and yeah we because this is such an infamous point of the run we um, yeah we like to talk about green uh, both the disco whale there and the philosopher and uh, green is best girl I agree so yeah um, so, this is just a quickly. huge auto-scroller. The first part was an actual shmup where killing the enemies fast mattered. But after you saw the the ship, basically, it just became a huge auto-scroller. We still want to kill the enemies fast because uh, we don't want 9S getting the kills. Because uh, if 9S gets the kills, uh, we don't get XP. He steals our XP and it's especially bad with the Goliath Flyer. Um, he can get the last hit on the Goliath flyer, and it just yoinks all the XP from that, and we don't like that. I'm very scared that that happened. <laughs> I haven't leveled up yet. That's so wild. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. They would do something like that. Good job. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, maybe you can do some shoutouts right now. So, um, if you are interested in running this game or any of the other Nier or Drakengard games as well, uh, there's a website for you. It's called sponsoredbydrakengard.com, which is not a joke. And we're not actually sponsored we're by Drakengard. We're not Drakengard. actually sponsored. <laughs> it's the Discord vanity URL. That's sponsoredbydrakengard.com. Come join. We need more people. <laughs> we, have, we have memes and cookies. It's a great game, really. It really is. <laughs> I also want to tell everyone that uh, if you are enjoying the run, please make sure you follow our runner at twitch.tv slash uh, as well as our commentators tonight. That's twitch.tv slash jnu underscore and twitch.tv slash muffin Ganon. And again, I'm super happy that all of you were able to um, be here today for Time Capsule. So thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.
a great yeah. experience. Also, want to wanna let so, yeah. um, everybody know that uh, if you are watching this on YouTube from the future and you're interested in checking out our shows live, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash games done quick and uh, tune in. We start most weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's got an electromagnetic barrier over its whole body. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, this huge auto stroller <laughs> section. Oh, also, um, before that, Are you Yorha? Um, we're going to meet 4B again, which, uh, if you paid attention during the intro shmup, um, 4B got lasered in the head. And he's here now. Um, and if you continue to play the game and ending some inside quests and in ending C, or uh, she just never stops calling you. It's always there. It's really interesting. So, uh, we just uh, found out that um, Gruen actually has a really stinky mouth because he hasn't uh, brushed his teeth in like a couple centuries. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, this we, really we got this toothbrush cannon right here. over here. Um, this thing's armor is too are we going to use some of uh, Nine S's dialogue to uh, perfectly line up our shots? to uh, um, hit him inside his mouth as fast as we can. Lay down some fire in its stupid mouth. Yeah, I've been seeing a couple of questions in chat. This is ending A. We're only getting the first major ending of uh, the video game. We're not doing uh, all major endings, unfortunately, in my opinion. So yeah, apparently uh, Gruen doesn't like uh, brushing his teeth, so he stood up. And now he's like, waving his arms now. Um, the other thing is, um, the cores you saw Allo shoot, um, the yellow circular thingies, um, so this whole section is an auto-stroller, uh, the only places where you can gain or lose time are the cores, and they are RNG, so this section is a 14-minute RNG auto-stroller, which we love very much. Very No sarcasm there. <laughs> Can I ask, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it, my, okay. My fun <laughs> fact was not very fun. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flat out say it. It was just that you could skip that cutscene in another ending, but not this one for some reason. Yeah, a couple of people were asking about uh, the C3 mod. I thought maybe this would be a good chance for you to re-explain that for maybe those of us just uh, getting here. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so, hey, go ahead. Uh, so basically, the gist of it is uh, we have our sword, Virtuous Contract, um, and we level it up three times in the speedrun, hopefully. Um, and the reason why I say hopefully is because the drops are RNG. Uh, uh, two, two sets of drops. So we have dented plates and severed cables. We need to get enough of those to upgrade our sword. Um, and it doesn't always happen, which really stinks because it saves a lot of time. So we created a mod so that it always gives us the drops, no matter what. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, do you want to explain the rest? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm really going to focus on these um, cores. Um, uh, the v VC3 mod also gives us um, taunt chips. So the flyers in the desert we killed uh, have a super, super low chance of actually dropping taunt plus two, and it is possible, and actually, in uh, without the mod, uh, just regular any percent vanilla, uh, the world record for that, which Alaric has, um, <laughs> got all of the RNG checks uh, for that, uh, which is less than one percent, getting VC3 and Tom plus two, which was the first time you've ever gotten that in like three thousand hours, right, Alo? <laughs> yep, that is the oh. first time I have ever gotten that. That's wild. Yeah. That, that is why we have VC3 mod. I think it's nice when the community can like agree on something like that to make it just more, I don't know, quality of life for the runners. So that's a good thing. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Grun's trying to high five us here. He misses, unfortunately. Yeah. Whoosh. Whoosh. Just out of curiosity, um, do 
Uh, do you have a favorite character, like near character? Oh, that's a cool. meme answer or a real answer? <laughs> like a real answer. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Apart from Gruen here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't talk uh, about Gruen, other Gruen characters. Is always, Gruen is always up on top of the favorites in your Atomic list. Um, apart from Gruen, um, I don't know. Definitely not 9S though. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not 9S. Or 9S. Um, I like a Ichu a lot. Uh, I liked Ichu's. Cool. Yeah, I liked Ichu's arc and Avera. Um, not not just Automata. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we uh, Nine S got a really big, uh, really really big toothbrush this time, and seems to have worked. Yeah, we're done with Grun now. So uh, we're just gonna do a drown warp here to uh, skip a six O's dialogue. Unfortunate. I'd actually probably say 6 yeah. is my favorite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say that now. 6 is best girl. Too bad we skip all our dialogues. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we're just going to be going to... Uh, uh, going to... See what's up at Resistance Camp and get a scanner to look around for 9S. Um... Ninus got uh Ninus got missing during uh Rune and yeah. So I just lied to you guys a second time. Uh we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna clip out of here and oh, go to, directly to Copied City. Okay. Uh, hopefully I, I will I will take my time. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a really precise clip uh, that Aloe you like ninety nine percent of the time has no problem doing it's it, true. In, like, it hurts. Milliseconds. <laughs> Yeah, it's just marathon art. It happens. You can see what I got mad about yeah. um, with the elevator. So you can actually cancel the animation of the buttons, like to be actually like pushing the button or whatever. Um, if you do some aerial movement with like an attack or whatever. Um, and we're actually going to be do using that in a couple places. It saves like, I don't know, like 0.3 or something like that. Something very small, but it does add up. Yeah, so um, we're just going to ignore 9S right now. Uh, we're going to be checking up on Adam. Uh, he got a nice shirt this time. Uh, that's nice. And we can see that Adam, uh, after our first encounter in the desert, uh, spent a lot of time practicing English and talking. And he doesn't shut up. Like, we don't like talking. We, we liked you when you didn't talk, but... Um, he just doesn't shut up now, and it's grand, don't you think? Uh, he likes to mansplain a lot, Almost and we're going to be doing a skip called Mansplaining Skip. And yet it's currently That's just going to skip out of an talking. And to do that, we're going to be doing another thingy called Tubutsia, where we're going to be using Tubi's butt to love, skip dialogue, basically. I hope yeah, I'm this is enough. a triple dialogue cancel. Oh, oh nice. That worked. Uh, that's a triple dialogue cancel, so... We go in the elevator that there. Uh, pod, your pod goes. Uh, oh, just look for 9s. We shouldn't leave. Blah blah blah. And that dialogue matches with Adam's death. dialogue, and those two match with Pod's dialogue when he gets pet. So they all just cancel each other out, and results in a cutscene playing. So we want to damage Adam uh, around health health here. Uh, we don't want to damage him below that because he starts teleporting. But around health HP is where the dialogue starts playing to advance. To now we just just melt kill him. Adam because he, yeah, he just he wants to die. Oh him. please, whatever. Goodbye, Adam. Goodbye. <laughs> oh yeah, apparently Ninus is here as well. Or whatever. Yeah, 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 minor yeah, details. Whatever. So a cool thing coming up here. Um. I just saved 30 seconds right there. And by I saved 30 seconds, I mean I lost 30 seconds because I said it too early. 
Uh, we get to listen to Six oh, no. for like uh, five seconds. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I have not messed that up oh, no. in a very long time. Oh. oh. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. We're only losing like 25 because I know a thingy. I'm actually oh. checking. Okay, good. He's not there. Oh my god. Some glitch hunting. You can so. see. You can see how knowledgeable Aloe is in this game with all the time he spent. Uh, messed not up just too doing, much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not just doing uh, regular runs or anything. Um, this guy um, has finished the game using only the pod kick attack, the pod spin <laughs> attack. Enti the entire game. It took me 20 it's hours. Amazing, I guess. And it took 20 hours. The only attack he could do was the pod spin. So yeah. I hope that was a very uh, enlightening experience for you. It was an experience. Enlightening, I'd... Uh, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, we just got... Uh, we just got uh, told of another machine group that disconnected from the network. And... Oh yeah, Pascal's talking to right now. Yeah, so the pot spin is the thing we do... So if you if are gliding want, and you press any of the attack the buttons, uh, to be kind of like own. grabs onto the pod, yes. does a little Indeed. twirly twirl, Apparently spins, and it deals damage. And it kind of locks your horizontal height as well. Yeah, the thing Al was doing right now. You know. uh, we mainly use it for movement. Sounds good. We only use it for movement, actually. Yeah. But yeah, so we got here earlier before Pascal. So what that's going to allow us to do is is just do a roll to be ahead. <laughs> Could play Don one like that. Yeah, we're just going to be in that time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the machines here want to sign a peace treaty with us. Uh, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. We'll just go sign the treaty, make some new friends and leave. Um, so nothing to talk here. Nothing to talk much about here. Sure. Well, um, I always have announcements. <laughs> um, yeah. First of all, I want to let everyone know that uh, Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that exists on YouTube, and it features channels of, sorry, it features highlights of all the best moments from all of our GDQ Hotfix shows, uh, including Time Capsule. So feel free to use the exclamation mark highlights command in chat to learn more about it. Uh, and also a big shout out to all of our supporters, your subs and gift subs, Prime Gaming subs and bits all help support uh, the weekly content for Hotfix. Uh, so thank you all so much. And uh, if you do enjoy these Hotfix shows, please consider uh, subscribing. Yeah. So while we wait for the MOOC here, Alo just go up, got out of bounds and went up there. It's a really risky thing to do because if you fall down, um, uh, you reset the MOOC. So we're coming up on Factory. This is the most dense, the most hard, and um, really nerve-wracking part of the run. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of risky tricks here. And let's see how we go. So we just talked to Pascal to skip Pascal talking to uh, uh, the MOOCs, saying that, like, oh, we were discussing a peace treaty. Hello. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, instead of killing all the enemies here, we're going to clip out and void out. And what that's going to do is despawn all the enemies here, and the game will count them as killed. So that's going to open the elevator for us, and we can just go in the elevator and go beat with 9S here. Um, before that, though, uh, we're going to be doing a trick, which I'm going to shut up for. No. No. Oh, that's hey, that's so the, that, was that the, is the best way I could have messed that up, though, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so what Allo tried yeah, to do true. there is, it is really hard. Um, uh, what he tried to do is, he tried to get on top of the elevator while uh, luring Pascal inside the elevator. Um, it's really finicky because Pascal can teleport to you above the elevator. The doors can close. It's really hard to do. But instead, we're going to be um, clipping out uh, to reset the elevator. So normally, you can't use this elevator. As this elevator is going to bring us back to the first room we were in, which is really high up in the factory. And we're going to be using this room to basically plunge to places and get triggers. 
Um, this is a... Oh, no. This is a really precise um, void out here. So there's a trigger in front of this door that we want to get. And there we go. Um, we void out right after we get the trigger. And we line that up. We can't, like, time... Or we can't, like, void out on command. So we have to time our fall and the distance we fall. Uh, to basically void out after we get the trigger. And from there, we go basically plunge to the end of factory. And... Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Oh my god, that oh was so god. scary. Oh, that was really oh, nice. scary. That was a nice save. <laughs> yeah, that was another place where you can ride on top of the elevators and coming up on a big circular platform, which nothing wrong is going to happen. Oh no. That was very scary. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this is Soshi, Sushi whatever you want to call it. Um, we're basically chilling up on this bridge uh, to avoid getting hit. And it's just a convenience thing. Pascal is just ascending. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just waiting for this little 9S annoying to hack the factory and disable systems and stuff. Do it! Factory system at 80% control. And Pascal's really gone. Yeah. So really about this section, <laughs> um, you'd think it's dialogue based, but it's actually on a timer. So even if we had a chance to uh, speed this dialogue up here, it wouldn't save us any time. And Aloe is using his heavy attacks to um, line up the, the end of this timer. Uh, so he can uh, buff here and immediately start attacking the enemy. Uh, while he's still uh, staggered from um, having his shield removed. And yeah, that was a good fight. There we go. Nice. That was a half cycle. Let's go. That was a half cycle. With all the damage we have from VC3 and Tompless 2, half cycling Soshi is really much easier than... Um, it is a lot easier. And it's also it guaranteed. It is a lot easier than... But yeah, we're going to be coming up on the end of Factory where we're going to be doing Shabu Skip. So, Shabu Skip is found by Shabu. Uh, he's a great old runner and a great commentator. Um, and it's named that way not because he found it, but because Shabu used to, while commentating runs, talk about how... Oh, no. I'm, I'm just oh, going to no. do it. I don't care. <laughs> I want to do the trick um, now. <laughs> so, he used to talk about how poetic it is that um, uh, the first skip the first out of bounds we do in factory and prologue um, is the same out of bounds we do and it's the last out of bounds we do he used to talk about how poetic that is and how cool that is and then he found the skip which skips him talking about that so it's called shabu skip because it skips shabu talking about that basically i like that keeping the memory alive yeah so we, we have a skip that skips Shabu talking about the skip, which isn't convenient at all. And now Shabu is talking about the skip, but he's talking, that is skipping the skip. And now we're talking about Shabu who's talking about. No oh boy. Shabu talking. Are we coming up with the actual hardest trick in the game? Is getting over this wall. Oh, I did it. Let's go. There we go. Let's go. There we go. That's actually hard, like no means. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Al is going to be slow-mo spear dashing here to slow down the falling of enemies. And he couldn't quite get it right. It's a little RNG as well. But um, yeah, so this game requires all the inputs with like slow-mo spear dashing, um, slow-mo DDG taunt, jump stab, healing. Uh, the coordination you have to have. Uh, with your hands is insane. You have to order your moves perfectly. You have to be hitting the buttons as short as possible for some. Uh, apart from that, you have to be doing this really fast. And Al is just a master at this, and he just makes it look really easy. But yeah, this is Burning Rest Camp. Uh, robots grew mouse and are eating androids? I am going get this part. <laughs> 
But yeah, we have this uh, fight here um, that's in a 2D section, and the kind of annoying thing about it is that um, there's an RNG element to it where um, the enemies can either do a fast attack uh, or fast animation of exploding or a slow one where the corpse kind of blocks your way. So you can't really like move to the next enemy. And that's, that can be a bit annoying, but yeah, Alan mastered it perfectly. Can be really annoying. Yeah, after that, we have our second ball enemy, uh, which is Bokushi, uh, which has uh, an electric field around it, but since we have resilience, uh, after we take this damage, we're going to be uh, immune to it for a little bit. And so during that, we're just going to be... I did. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to be damaging Bokushi to death. Oh so there's a... <laughs> there's a small RNG with Bokushi. Uh, it's not small, actually, but there's a 50% chance. Well, it's not technically pure RNG. Uh, there's a chance that he might lose you 12 seconds by not standing up properly. Let's take this bastard down. Yeah, and it's based yeah. on like what attack he does. And I got the slow one. Oh, wow. <laughs> like a double tier RNG. There you go. Are right, you going fans. for the fish? Let's yeah. go. He's doing yeah, it. we just lure that core up the hill so we could damage it easily. No, we couldn't get a fish. No fish. Still yeah, the only person... Coming who's ever gotten close to getting a fish there. Uh, it was Rod G1400 in chat. Nobody's ever gotten a fish. So yeah, I was going to be slow-mo spear dashing over to uh, Pascal's dwarf. Um, Pascal just gave us a quick call saying that uh, their village was under. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> So yeah, we have a couple yeah, of enemies be... here, kind of angrily attacking the wall. I don't really know why they're doing that. They could, they could just clip out as well. <laughs> now just say why they're just attacking the wall. That's so really oh, stupid. Oh, I, I had to pick that up. That was very important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was incredibly this... important. I definitely I didn't mess boy up. Here. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna be slow mo DDGing him. Um, boom! That's 13 seconds of time save. Just talking to 9s there. Uh, we skipped Pascal just thanking us, basically. Uh, oh, the timing good. for that can be really precise. Um, coming out of a slow-mo DDG in Core 2 uh, to talking with 9S, but uh, this is a huge time save for how small the thing is. And now we meet Edgy Angry Eve. Oh, now... Oh, this part is scary. Eve can kill you really fast, um, but we can kill him really fast as well if he's nice to us. Oh, you're doing the new thing. Let's go. Oh, that was really fast too. It's going to be phase two. Oh, let's go. Do we just pet the pod to get some dialogue, which actually, I don't know how this works. It just cancels Normally some of what the we do dialogue. here. Basically. Yeah, okay. Um, so what we normally did is, which is, I think, cooler, um, while Eve is healing himself, we out-damaged his heal, so he couldn't heal himself, which basically skipped the entire phase. And now onto this phase where Eve is flying, we're just going to be lasering him, taunting him, and... Uh, wait, were those lasers? Uh, those hit, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They so yeah, we're going to be self-destructing again. Uh, that's rare that we use self-destruct for the intended purpose. Omega Zoomer strats. <laughs> this is actually true. So now this this phase is kind of annoying because uh, we don't have any of our um, melee attacks anymore. We only have our ranged attacks and Eve is kind of being all stinky right now. With, oh, he's um, being really away. stinky. Oh my god. Really stinky, yeah. <laughs> I am um, scared. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay. So time is coming up right after this dialogue here. Um, as soon as the cutscene starts. As soon as the cutscene starts. And that is GG. Yeah? Yes, uh, so, GG. Hands broke.
I can always reload. That was a great run. Thank you. Oh yeah. That was honestly really, really impressive. <laughs> I didn't realize how much Out of Bounds was actually in this run, and it looks so cool. <laughs> so There's thank you so much. We don't stay in bounds, yeah. <laughs> Walls are a suggestion. Oh, that's I not Yeah, really, Walls are a suggestion. That's time. This game. Well, GG again. Allo, do you have any shout outs or anything you'd like to uh, mention before we uh, switch over to the next game? You, you Jay, or Muffin? Yeah. Uh, I would like to shout out the Near Speedrun Discord because I would not be here without all of the lovely people over there. Um, so if you want to join that Discord and join this amazing community that we are a part of, that would be sponsored by Drakengard.com. Um, we are not actually sponsored. That Yes, that is the real link. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to run this game or any of the other Drakenir games, uh, head over there. And yeah, anything else that we want to say? Also, one really important thing here. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this important skip here. Uh, we're going to be skipping to be crying. But we're gonna skip that after she kills 9S. Uh, that's really important <laughs> because we want 9S dead and 2B not sad. Oh, God. Um, Alo, did you have your loot this time around? I did. If you want to know the time, it was a 119.54. I'd say that's wow. pretty good. Yeah. That is very that good. good. And also blew the um, time out of the water that you had for estimate. So good job. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we are going to uh, switch over to the next game, which will be The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Traveler's Challenge. So uh, again, if you did enjoy the run, make sure you follow our runner, uh, twitch.tv slash York, as well as uh, jnu underscore and Muffin Ganon on commentary. We will be back in just a moment. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. You are watching Time Capsule. I'm Smooth Operative, and I am here joined with Aeon Frodo for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Hi, Aeon. It's nice to see you back. <laughs> yes, hello. This is, uh, I guess, not your normal it's Breath of the Wild speed run. Saucy it's one. kind of... <laughs> it's, a, it's a special challenge, really. It's... So the idea of this challenge is to uh, tag every tower except the tower you start on. So I picked the Alcala Tower to start on, uh, mainly because there's a lot of guardians and really dangerous stuff surrounding it. And yeah, so you, and the rules are you can't quick travel and you can't use any major glitches. But you can use minor glitches like whistle. Okay, uh, it sounds like a plan that. to me. <laughs> so, yeah, so yep, just tag every tower except the one you start on, and yeah, don't quick travel or do all that. <laughs> anyway, sure, yeah. I'll explain the law pretty soon, but I'll start the um, run pretty soon. So, uh, three, two, one, right. and go. So, oh, <laughs> wow, I failed to jump. Cool. <laughs> That's fine. So the Traveler's ch Challenge came about through a random YouTube comment on um, the Basements channel, uh, suggesting all the rules and all that stuff. And some YouTubers picked it up, and um, I watched a particular YouTuber called um, Mr. A Game, and go and I looked at the challenge. And I go, like, hmm, maybe I can do like a little speed run route of it for fun. So you kind of. And so you kind of here we are. to, you know, take the initiative to push it further into the speedrun territory. I like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun to actually do that and like try to figure out a route of something that's, um, yeah, not really uh, done often. So there's gonna be things you don't usually see in Breath of the Wild speedruns, such as I'm gonna be using the master cycle. A lot and usually that's like a DLC thing you have like a like you're allowed to start with a file at any point of the game so I have a completed file and I got like stuff prepared beforehand I even like ate food just before the start of the run um, yeah so, so can you do this um, like with a fresh game as well or it's kind of got to be like an already established game uh, you could do it with a fresh game, I think. Whoa, I did that in practice too. Thank goodness I didn't jump off the entire thing. But yeah, so I'll be using Rivali Scale a lot. So 
Rivali Scale is a reward you get after you complete the Varmido dungeon, uh, Divine Beast. And it's a very useful ability just to get any vertical height. And here's an example of whistle sprinting where I hold down the um, down uh, the, the lower D-pad and I also have to hold down the... Um, yeah, I also have to mash the B button. So that's what whistle sprinting is. Is it like awkward to do on the controller? <laughs> Yeah, it is, but I can like control it quite easily. It's it's okay. I can like use like the bottom part of my thumb. <laughs> like claw and all strats. That. <laughs> yeah. So I tag the first tower there. That's Elden Tower. And now I'm going to go down very quickly thanks to my flat fire sword. Uh, the fi reason why I have the fire sword equipped is so that I have um, heat when I go into cold areas. So I don't um, may t get too much uh, cold damage when I go into those areas, because I will be going to pretty cold areas. That's kind of cool. So it acts almost as like your own personal heat source, so you don't have to worry about being freezing. <laughs> yeah, changing clothes and all that. Also, I am wearing climbing gear clothes, just so it's easier to climb stuff. Oh, uh, okay. And it, it like drains less stamina as well. Nice. Yeah, so uh, right now we're going towards the uh, Lanaru Tower. Sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. And uh, we're just going to ignore the people that uh, need our help. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> in the game, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you, you can help people. That guy missed this time. Usually people died. But yeah, so thank goodness that no one actually uh, fell while we were inside of them. But yeah. So can, like, the... Uh the NPCs of the world sort of like interrupt your route? They can, but it, it very rarely okay, happens. Okay, yeah. So another thing about, um, so with the Master Cycle Zero, you have to refuel it every now and again. So we'll have to like stop and refuel it. <laughs> but luckily it's at points where uh, they, I don't have to like stop for too much. It's just like re anyway. real life, have to get the petrol. Yep. But luckily we just use supplies for petrol and not actually pay for the petrol. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Link is uh, sneaky like that. Yeah. So now we use the Revali scale here. We're actually going to use all of it. Now, when I run out of Revali scale, it will go on the cooldown. And because I got the DLC uh, Revali scale plus, it will be only a three minute cooldown instead of a 10 minute cooldown. That sounds better. <laughs> yep. So we're just going to touch the Leonero Tower there, and that's uh, two towers now. I forgot how many towers exactly. That yeah, we I was did. I was about to ask, and then <laughs> I thought you I heard you say fifteen at one point, but I have no idea. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's not fifteen. I okay, can show okay. You that. I think there's like eight or nine. My brain just came up with the number fifteen for no reason. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but this is like a pretty chill part of the run where I'm just gonna drive to my next destination. So there's also another thing that I should point out that usually I go like near the paths that it's pretty safe to actually like one the paths are pretty even ground and we because the bike is kind of jank when you drive it you don't tend to go off the um beaten path too much and because i can't quick travel and can't use major glitches it's yeah the fastest form of transportation so if you are not on a path uh do you actually go slower on the bike uh not necessarily, because you can go down hills and all that sort of okay. stuff, which helps. Maybe more obstacles. So we'll be going off, yeah, the paths and everything, but there will be more obstacles. And as you can see, this is pretty hilly terrain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bomb launching isn't, around, isn't allowed. Major glitches aren't allowed. It, it seems to me like... Uh chat wants to know the rules of the category which makes me think maybe we, we should make it a category <laughs> <laughs> officially uh, if, 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 this, if the moderators of, of the speedrun.com leaderboards um, 
want it as a category at that school. It's just not. I'm pretty sure my my time is totally beatable as well. Like my PB is a forty forty five. Do you think it is something that other runners would be interested in? I think so. If they don't want like to do any of the like the tougher glitches in Breath of the Wild, that's why I was like interested in it because it's like oh I can like totally do this and um, gauge my interest in actually speed running Breath of the Wild itself. So. I mean, I think that's pretty cool that if you did decide to uh, propose the idea to them, I, I think a lot of people would be behind you. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. It, it just depends. Well, I would, and I think chat would too. So I'm going to, like, touch this tower, but I'm purposely going to... Um, go into the mud here and that is actually faster so just tag the woodland tower and now I'm I've respawned back on top of this platform which is really nice because then I can go and glide through this little section here the glider really comes in handy yeah well it does you get it like extremely early in the game after you complete the plateau oh, okay so I... and that's like <laughs> The opening area. I haven't played this game myself personally. I, I'm sure most of you in chat have, but uh, I hear it is quite an amazing game. Yeah, it is. Like, just when, um, yeah, just there's just a lot of cool things in it. Uh, also, uh, not just Nintendo, but my one of my favorite devs who make like a bunch of RPGs, uh, Monolith Soft, they were involved in making this game as well. Hence, why you see uh, the, the Xenoblade 2 DLC stuff. Uh, well, not DLC, it's just part of the update, but yeah, you get, like, Rex's outfit, who's, like, the main protagonist in Xenoblade 2. Oh, that's really cool. And, yeah, and also there's, like, a um, area in the game called, I think called Elmer Hills or something like that, and that's, like, named off a main character in the Xenoblade series as well. So, yeah, they, yeah, Monolith Soft did a bunch of work on this game as well, and, um, yeah, Nintendo allowed them to name a location after one of the characters. So <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. Anyway, so I just got spotted by a guardian and <laughs> the laser lasered off the bike. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so these wow, I wow, this this guardian is a bully. Okay, let's. Does this guardian not realize <laughs> that we are trying to have a comfy ride here? <laughs> yeah, so we're going near Hyrule Castle, and that's like a huge danger zone where. Uh, guardians just like ch chill out <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it is the final area of the game. Like, look at how intimidating it is. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, lots of really deadly enemies around this area. Luckily, we do have the master cycle. So, we, well, that guardian just popped in. <laughs> popped popped in, in to say hello. <laughs> Hi. Yep. But yeah, the moving guardians are like some of the most deadliest enemies in the game. I'm getting targeted by a lot of them. <laughs> I don't think I usually get targeted by that many. Yeah, they really are, are not uh, pleased with you <laughs> driving through their territory today. So now that we're past all that, we're going to Central Tower, which is another guardian infested area. <laughs> so usually it's like pretty difficult to even like touch the tower to get there, but yeah. So what's our plan then to get to this one? Oh, we're just gonna like drive through and hope for the best, but it's, it's, it's not gonna be too rough. The master cycle that does make things a lot easier. One time I will actually want to try to do this without DLC to see how hard it is. Oh my gosh, yeah, you should. Yeah, so... <laughs> wow. Okay, I didn't turn... This is, like, I... I didn't get that much heat on me in practice, by the way. <laughs> I didn't get shot as This much. is a hot run, you know? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, we're out of there.
Well, while we are cruising along to the next tower, I think it would be a great time for me to remind you all that Summer Games Done Quick 2022 game submissions are now open until March 30th, which means you have one more day to submit your games to the marathon if that's something that you're interested in. So uh, you can find out more information at gamesdonequick.com if uh, you want to submit, which I hope you will. So there's this little section up here we can actually like climb up on this. Oh, you caught some airtime there. <laughs> yeah, we, we do get a little bit of... We're going to have more airtime, like, kind of soon, actually. But this is, like, a pretty smooth path from now, from here on out. <laughs> some questions about the category are flooding in <laughs> from chat again oh, yeah. so um yeah. i love the comment how'd oh. you get the bike 12 minutes in <laughs> yeah well i just like loaded my game that's all <laughs> so yeah if, that, that's if you do yeah so you're like, allowed to like start a file at any point so just to make things clear and yes we're allowed to get off the bike as um as you can see, so I can touch this tower. You can't really drive a bike across the water. It will just disintegrate. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good jump off there. And I need to refill my bike. That should be it. So sometimes you can actually, like, miss the... Um, miss fueling up your bike. I didn't realize the animation until just now. You just kind of, here you go, bike, and <laughs> puts it on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ready to here go. go. <laughs> yeah, so you can actually miss, like, throwing the your um, materials in to fuel up the bike, and it, it, it just is embarrassing when that happens. So <laughs> oh hopefully my gosh. that doesn't happen, but <laughs> if it does, we can all have a good laugh. <laughs> So right now we're going uh, through this treacherous mountain section because uh, it is much faster to just like go through the mountains. And we're going to do a big jump off this um, hill here. Rack up the airtime points. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, sorry, that's a pretty funny. <laughs> Thank you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> so when it's raining, uh, you actually like, uh, yeah, it, Link can't really climb up this whole uh, rock slide uh, rock, uh, wall very well. And you just like slide down. It's still raining. My goodness, stop raining. I'm so that's why I have the extra stamina, just in case it I get that sort of bad luck. So it is like RNG weather throughout the game. It can be, yeah. Okay. So uh, when I go through like my um, save file, it's like okay, make sure I don't have like this weather here and all that sort of stuff. But sometimes you can't help it. So fair, yeah. All that stuff. Anyway, so we're going to the um, Ice Tower. I forgot its name, but we can. It'll show up soon. Show you how um, silly I am. Anyway, let me get through here. The bike. I swore. I swore I got this bike through here. There we go. <laughs> Hebra, yeah. So we're gonna um, melt this ice with a fire arrow. We're gonna tag the tower, and then we need to get out. 
And because the ice melted, we're able to get through. So that's why I have fire arrows equipped. I should mention that earlier, but I have fire arrows equipped. It. I actually wasn't Just sure if you were going to use your sword or not, because I figured that's kind of fiery. You can use your, I can use my sword as well, but fire arrows are better in that situation. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm getting like minor bits of damage uh, because of the cold. E even though I do have the sword and everything, I'm still not warm enough to not sustain cold damage. But I, I should be out it soon. I'm still not and warm enough. I might enough. get hit by a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm waiting for spring to really go into full effect because it's still a bit chilly here. <laughs> right. Oh my god! <laughs> I just saw the the white path. Yep. <laughs> that was very unfortunate, <laughs> but we're okay. <laughs> oh, bike, please. Sometimes the bike doesn't get um, summoned properly. We have like a tablet that has all our um, runes on it, and the bike is uh, a rune on this tablet. And uh, you have other runes that help you throughout the game, like magnesis and uh, bombs and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, this bridge here, so there's a lot of wind here, so I need to be a little bit careful when going across this. So there's a wind that's like, pushing me to the right. I think actually all the weather effects are kind of keeping us on edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Also, there's going to be like a giant rock monster called a Talus that's going to um, come after us whenever we hear the music here. Yep, there we go. It's coming after us, but we can just safely ignore it. So this um, next tower is surrounded by this um, thing, the stuff called Malice, and Malice uh, damages to you uh, as long as you're, uh, as long as the Link is in it. I might get, um, might use Mitha's grace early here, which is, ooh, not, uh, not great, but we'll see. <laughs> yep, I think I'm gonna use Mitha's grace here. There we go, thanks for Mitha. So yeah, you get Mitha's grace by beating the, oh, Varuta um, Divine Beast. And that like instantly revives you and gives you some extra hearts on top of that as well. Oh, okay, so we're not quite at, at max, or I guess we, uh, we're missing like a tiny sliver. Oh yeah, tiny sliver of uh, the extra heart, yeah, that we got. So we're over max HP, but it's like a tiny, like, yeah, sliver of that heart was... Um, uh, we got slightly damaged by the malice, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because we're still in it. Yeah. So this part is pretty dangerous to just uh, run through casually because you have these flying guardians that uh, will um, shoot you and murder you if you um, happen to be in their line of sight. Luckily, again, master cycle is too quick and we don't have to worry about that too much. Every time you jump off the bike and then switch to the um, glider, I get nervous. I'm like, wait, no. Yeah, Link's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Not if I get whacked by that enemy, though. So the next area we're going to is like a, um, oh, we're going through is like this cold area that's uh, next to a desert, actually, because uh, deserts do get cold at night. I love all the um, terrain and stuff so far that we've seen. This is a really beautiful game. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's what the Traveler's Challenge, uh, challenge uh, 
it's meant to do like just show off the rest of the game you can see it and all that sort oh of yeah because you were saying that in the, the main run you don't really get to see a lot of these cool areas huh um yeah not really unless you do like all dungeons all 100 percent. right so. yeah cool or all shrines so yeah sorry about that wolf <laughs> in my path I'm trying not to run over animals, but they 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 might get into my path, and that would be very unfortunate. Just a sprain, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Was that a shooting star? Oh, I th I, I think that. it was. Ooh, that was pretty. Yeah, you, you can actually collect the shards of the shooting star as well when when they expose their location with uh, a beam of light. Unfortunately, I won't be collecting one of those, but they're like kind of red drops. So what um like um what is the purpose of collecting them? Like, what does it do? Oh, uh, mainly to get some really good stuff. I oh, think. okay. I like, like weapon upgrades and yeah, stuff. Yeah, play the game casually. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Arm upgrades, all that sort of stuff which you get through the fairies in the game. I think we briefly saw a fairy fountain when I got the got off the temp bath tower, so, yeah. So, I need to refuel my bike <laughs> <laughs> once again. <laughs> Let's do it. You refill a bit more. <laughs> Link's facial expression is so funny, too. He's holding them like, well, I don't know if this will be enough, but here we go. <laughs> So now we're actually going to go in the desert, but it's it's night, so it's going to be, so it's not going to be as warm as it usually is during the day, which is nice. So I don't sustain heat damage while I'm in the desert. Also, I like getting that rolling star off that hill. It's nice. And we're going to go to our next tower, which is over a giant bombless pit. But we got a lot of speed in our bike and Rivali's gal just in case we need it, but we don't. And it's gonna safely glide to this tower and tag it. Oh, this is a really tall one. Yeah, it's like the tallest tower <laughs> in the game. Please let me glide. <laughs> okay, sometimes uh, even when you mash the um, X button, the, the glider doesn't come out near the tower, so it can be a bit spooky um, trying to glide from there. Oh yeah, geez. And you don't want to get you don't want to get too no, low no. because I, I really need to get up here. <laughs> so this is this little section here. So I can only summon my bike in certain parts of this area because this is meant to be like a shrine challenge, and it prevents you from like using any of your runes. That and that includes the master cycle. So I can't use my bike on top of this. So I'm just gonna have to just run and like um, jump uh, over there. That's, that's why I have my speed up food on, even though we won't be using it a lot. So it's just like some yeah. close calls and you want to be safe. Uh, yeah, that's true, and you get extra speed as well. Like, uh, I'm moving, like, um, triple speed and oh, all okay. that. Yeah, triple yeah. Like, normal movement speed and all that sort of stuff, so. And the food lasts a half an hour, which is very nice. I will be eating another one because of the length of the run is longer than half an hour, so. What is it typically? Uh, usually around, uh, between 40, 50 minutes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, two, um... To um, speed up foods is enough. I also like um, routing out the um, Rivali scales and when to use them as well. Because, yeah, there's like a specific, this specific route I use. And um, to make sure. Oh, almost hit that. And to make sure I, I use them all properly and at the right time. And so I don't have to wait for it to cool down. Like, this is a pretty big um, 
cliff to climb up across. So I use Revalis for that, but this cliff isn't as big, so I just climb up this one. Yeah, that's pretty nice to be able to do that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Revali is... Uh, Revali scale is so good. So Revali has, like, a kind of a cooldown? Yeah, he, yeah. So, and also me for so, like every one of the um, powers I have on the side, they have uh, cool nails. Oh, okay. And Mephis is the longest because she can. Re oh, I messed up that trick. Let's try that again. <laughs> I want to show it off because it's kind of cool. So there's like this really powerful wind that um, goes across in that area, and it prevents you from getting into that tower easily. Oh, <laughs> my angle is wrong. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone, Keys. <laughs> and not leave me alone. They don't want to see the cool trick. But we do. <laughs> I, I'm messing it up. That's not good. So yeah, now we finally um, go down because yeah, it's hard to hit that tower with even with the glider because the, sorry, sorry, the glider, um, it doesn't help that we're forced to um, go in the wind's direction and the wind's blowing in the opposite direction yeah. to prevent us from getting into that tower. So yeah, it took a couple of tries, but we made it to that tower. Nice. Yeah, that seems uh, like the yeah. RNG of the weather could be a bit annoying at times. Yeah, although that that part is an RNG, like the, the, oh, it's, it's always like, like oh, certainly. the weather's always like that. I gotcha. Yeah, around that tower. Yeah, to make it harder to get to that tower. <laughs> yeah, some some towers are not as um, easy to get to um, because of some mechanics like that. Like the ten band for tower is generally hard to get to without like Rivali scale because of all the like enemies that are surrounding it and that they have electric damage and all that and you have to swim through the water oh, which geez. is also another hazard <laughs> especially when there's a lot of electricity around <laughs> yeah, <I bet>. so, <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah Anyway, hopefully we've lined this up properly. There's a lot of fog around the plateau, which is actually the starting area of the game. It's all coming full and circle. And where you um, get your first tower. Uh, yeah. This is a good lineup, though. And again, this is why I have my extra um, bit of stamina there. You can get it by um, sleeping at the um, inn or just getting like really good stamina food that gives you extra stamina. But I get I use the Gerudo Inn. It's a comfy place. Oh, well, that was <laughs> that was a little bit weird there, <laughs> but yeah. Again, my speed up food has come in handy. Cause um, yeah, didn't use my bike there. Oh, but we are using this bike in the snow. Although I probably had to refuel on the um, on my food pretty soon. I could do it while refueling the bike a little bit. <laughs> Okay, got in, good. And now, excuse me, I won't go to my food, thank you. Link is a hungry boy, he needs to eat his greens. How is the menuing in this game? Does it feel like pretty smooth or is it a bit clunky? It's, it's, it can be smooth, but then there's um, some menus that are attached to some very unusual buttons. Like to change your weapon, you have to use the, um, yeah, use the, um, uh, left and right D-pads to change weapons and shields and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's on the fly. So gotcha. it can feel 
a little clunky sometimes, but it can also feel like really fast. Sometimes. It's probably it like once depends on what menu you're in. Probably like also you're used to it now, so it's maybe not as big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, that's true as well. But yeah, this is the first tower you're meant to um, you, you, you get um, when you start your game and all that. Hi, first tower. The Great Patel Tower. Yep. And yeah, this is like the first area where you just get all your um, rune abilities and... Oh, you get them all um, here? All that cool stuff. Yeah, you get your runes at the very beginning oh, wow, of the game. Cool. And it's meant to be like, yeah. And it's meant to be like, yeah, allow you do whatever you like. Like, you you're, you can go to any of the major divine beasts in any order as well. That's surprising because so, I guess I figured maybe you would unlock these kind of abilities along the way. But it's fun that they give them to you all at once uh yeah with um the runes yeah divine beasts though not so much <laughs> the abilities are very strong <laughs> especially with Ali's. and that's um with the um the, uh, yeah the uh Varmido area with all the um Ritos hopefully I got that race right all the bird people. The so next tower is just across this bridge. This bridge might be familiar to some people who played uh, Twilight Princess, I believe. I haven't actually played Twilight Princess myself, but very iconic bridge. Yeah, I have yet to play Twilight Princess also. Um, I think last year I did play Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask for the first time though, and that, those were really fun. <laughs> That's cool. Even if uh, Majora's Mask time stuff was a bit confusing at first. <laughs> right, yeah. It takes a bit uh, Yeah, I was, I was just like, what is going on right now? It really took me a while to get the hang of it. <laughs> Anyway, we, we just tagged the lake tower through all these enemies and now we're going to just jump on our spike and make our escape. That was like a quick one. <laughs> yeah. They'll never catch us. Yep, bye. Oh, that Octorok almost hit us. That was kind of spooky. Those Octoroks are snipers. They, they, will, they will hit you. So now we're going to go and go. Uh, now we're going to go through the uh, forest and go through the um, uh, go to the Pharaon Tower. Yeah. So the Pharaon Tower has a bunch of enemies that can summon um, lightning, which is really bad. So lightning in the game uh, causes it to go to the nearest magnetic object, which is usually you, because I have a fire sword at my back and it has a lot of um, metal on it. So <laughs> you fair. It's, it's it's not a good time if um, one of those enemies spots me or if there's already lightning over there. So hopefully that I don't get bad weather and hopefully they don't spot me. <laughs> and yeah, the, the thunderstorms also come with rain, which makes it hard to climb up the side of the... Um, the just the... Yeah, the rock face, because... Yeah. Oh, there is lightning, but it's almost gone. <laughs> yep, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> I'm just going to get hit by this. That was quite the explosion. <laughs> Yeah, that's what lightning does. It comes quite a boom. But sudden, but somehow Link is, un is unscathed. <laughs> uh, not quite. He's he sustained a lot of hearts of damage. When and yeah, even with my um, hearts, he, he sustained a lot of damage. He's hiding the pain, I guess. <laughs> So that, that, that uh, Wiz, Wizrobe is going to spot me, but I'm just going to ignore him. This, this area is really laggy too. It's 
This is so much grass and foliage. It is a, actually probably my favorite so far, though. I do really like this area, looks wise. Yeah, it's really, yeah, I like it too. <laughs> So now we're going to do some mountain biking and we're going to go on the side of these cliffs. Now, you know, controlling the master cycle is can be really jank at times, so hopefully... Oh, I just broke an oar. Okay, didn't expect that to happen, but I'll take it because that means I have more room to move. But yeah, th this mountain path is... yeah. <laughs> no explanation needed. <laughs> It, it, it's it's not smooth. It's it's funny, but I actually just realized that the bike has like a horse face, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> I think that. Yeah, that's the idea. That's kind of a cool <laughs> nod. Oh! Oh no! Uh oh. <laughs> The bike is very bouncy, apparently. <laughs> no. Tires. Yep, they must be... It's good that the tires won't go flat anytime soon. Yeah, so sometimes you get some really unfortunate bounces like that. <laughs> uh, when, um, when just doing the challenge. <laughs> just, so... just Traveler's Challenge things, you know. <laughs> yeah. And now we're going to tag this tower, and that'll be our second last tower. So, to tag. So, we're going to be right on endgame, actually, I guess, on of the speedrun. And we'll see, uh, time will be when I um, tag the last tower, not this one. <laughs> I need to refill up. Uh, I can't use any major glitches. Uh, so, yeah. I can't use wind bombs. I'm just going to blow everything up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love doing that in those serious runs, but yeah, just... <laughs> nice. When I first did that accidentally, it was just like, yep. <laughs> Alright, goodbye enemies. See you never. So usually this place is a little bit dangerous. There's some like, um... Immobile guardians over there, but we're just going to completely ignore them and just beeline right towards the um, final tower. Big tricks is we can do wheelies, but I think that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and fight on the bike. Yeah, I honestly kind of wish it was its own mini game to like do tricks on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so fun. Maybe they'll do that in Breath of the Wild too. You know, that would be awesome. I mean, there was a crowbar on the back of that, so I probably helped that horse. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
So I'm about to approach the last tower. Okay, cool. Revali's gear went off. Hopefully I can do some swag tricks here. Okay, cool. That might make the swag possible. I hope. Please spread. Okay. Okay. Um. No! Dang! I wanted to do some swag. Okay, come on. <laughs> Let me swag it up. Yeah. And time. <laughs> nice. Good job, uh, <laughs> AR. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh, you know, thank I, I should just... I was Sorry. just going to say thanks for showing uh, this game off in this category that you made. Oh, uh, not me. It was mainly, um, well, I, it was a YouTube comment. That, I, I guess, um, made I guess, then... uh, you taking the initiative is kind of what I mean, but, but yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, the, I think afterwards what happened was, um, the YouTuber who had that comment, um, yeah, he, he, he beat one of my times and I was going, okay, that's cool. <laughs> And then I, I beat his time back. <laughs> yeah, I would. So, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. So. I would actually really love to see, like, a leaderboard for this at some point if you're feeling, like, ambitious enough. But um, I think a lot of people enjoyed this category. I think it's it's fun. It's challenging. And like you were saying, it's not, like, too intimidating to start. So pretty cool. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a good platform to, like, have, like, a little taste of speedrunning Breath of the Wild. Obviously... There's a lot of things that are, you know, part of Breath of the Wild that, um, yeah, require a lot of practice and uh, a lot of, um, uh, I guess, um, knowledge of, you know, the game. Yeah. 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 It, it's it's definitely good to, like, just dip your feet in, like, do, do, to do this sort of challenge and all that sort of stuff. Well, I appreciate you running this for Time Capsule Aeon. Um, is there any other shout outs or anything you'd like to uh, give before we wrap Revali's it up here? Is now ready. Um, apart from Rivali telling me they scale is ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, just I'd like to say thanks to um, Mr. A Game for doing this challenge. Otherwise, I would never have been aware of this whole thing. Um, yeah, and obviously the basement for um uh, i guess kind of competing against me <laughs> and doing all this like sort of like fun stuff um yeah my pb in this is like a 40 45 so i think it's totally beatable um even like even with the parameters set it's, it's still totally beatable. yeah you weren't even that far <laughs> off from your time it was like 4202 Oh, that's not yeah, too bad. So pretty, yeah, so pretty cool I, stuff. I wasn't aware of that. Well, yeah. um, thank you so much again, Aeon, for being here. Uh, if all of you watching really enjoyed the run as much as I did, please uh, follow Aeon Frodo here on Twitch. And uh, I think you will be very ple pleased to see uh, her content because she's great. But um, that is going to wrap it up for uh, Hotfix today. Uh, thanks for joining us for another great episode of Time Capsule. Um, I've been your host, Smooth Operative. I uh, want to remind you all that if you do have any ideas for your own Hotfix show or for one-off events, uh, you know, feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix and submit your ideas. We would love to hear from you and work with you. Um, but tomorrow we have the bargain bin followed by speedruns from the crypt and that starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, until then, have a great rest of your day or night, everyone, and we will see you later.